potential market correction again, and it usually can lead to some chop as the market shifts momentum from an uptrend to a downtrend. Obviously, you can see here. Hello, everyone. Traditional technical trader and investor Chris Vermulen shares his latest market outlook with key chart levels and price action patterns. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Equities are set to open slightly lower. NASDAQ down about six tenths of a percent. SP 500 down about uh, half a percent. It's really just starting to pick up speed here a little bit on the 10 minute chart. Uh, yesterday, when we look at the SPY, just to see regular trading hours on the daily chart, you can see it was a huge gap to the upside. As we know, gaps generally get filled. Uh, so it had a gap and go, uh, pushed right up into resistance, which is right into this previous high over here. It was also through this consolidation, where it was more or less found a bit of support and then broke down. And uh, so it is definitely... Uh, overextended. Usually gaps happen right at the end of a move, just like over here, you get a, you get a, a move down. Even over here, there was a massive gap, uh, a gap to the downside. It sold off, rebounded. Usually big gaps happen just near sh the end of some type of short-term trend. Uh, of course, now we've got had a big gap down. That was the end of the down uh, downburst kind of there. And now we've rallied up and now we've got a gap up which means it could be the end of this, this pop. So we'll see how this unfolds over the next few sessions. Um, and the market might generate a, a pause or pull back a bit and uh, take a bit of a breather if it is going to go higher or if it is going to start to reverse and sell down. Uh, if we take a look at where money else is flowing, so it's out of stocks this morning. We are seeing bonds move higher. Bonds have been consolidating in this little tight uh, kind of pendant formation here, this little flag. Uh, it's rallied up and usually the pennant formation or flag is the halfway point. And so this is pointing to another push higher uh, as, as uh, bonds try to slowly build out this. This looks very much so like a bottoming formation. And I do think eventually we're going to probably see a significant, uh, if I can grab this tool here, I think we'll eventually we're going to see a bottom. There's a few different le levels depending where we want to say these bottoms could be forming. There's going to be all kinds of different uh, significant uh, points here in, in volatility to the downside. Uh, but overall, this is kind of going to be the first level of, of making somewhat of a significant higher high. Uh, although we have seen it happen over here where it started to break above this level and then it rolled over and kind of died. This is more so the mo most important one. I think this is very significant levels through here this high and over here. So to me, this is kind of more so the full rounding bottom formation if it was to start to break above here. Now, it's a long ways up from where we are. Um, but overall, uh, it is building a, a small base here and it looks like it's primed and ready to start to have another push. And it might actually uh, become uh, turn into an uptrend here as we talked about in the mentoring session. Um, talking about the mentoring session, Let's uh, let's just touch on the CGS strategy. Uh, bonds have been out of favor for a long time. So when we get whoops, when we get out of the stock market, we move to a different asset class. Like we've been moving either into the dollar or just BIL, whichever has a favorable market condition. The U.S. dollar um, ETF has been sideways for the last year and change. So there's been no real strong trend there. So we've been moving to Bill, uh, but we're just starting to finally see. Um, the bond market, this is TLT, come to life where when we get out of the stock market, uh, we are seeing bonds move higher. So it gives us something to move into until there's a new trigger in the in the stock market. And at that point, bonds kind of more or less trades flat or sideways. Uh, our most recent exit uh, signal here generated a, a signal up in the bond market again. Uh, and that's this is pretty exciting because we're very close. We're a day or two away from bonds technically meeting the criteria for new triggers to happen and take advantage of bonds. So uh, this is for the CGS strategy, but overall uh, bonds, this is telling us we're, we're kind of coming into some interesting price action and the markets are starting to become <clears throat> a little more favorable. But if we take a look further in time, you can see whenever we get a, a move here in bonds, this one did generate some return. This one was a loss. This one was flat. This one was another loss. 
Uh, so bonds have been out of favor because they're in a downtrend. This is why you don't want to move to bonds uh, when they're in a bear market phase is uh, if you do get a gain, it's minimal. And in most cases, they will be losing trades. But that is completely starting to shift now that we have um, uh, the markets and trends starting to get back to a little bit more of the norm in terms of falling stocks, people move to bonds and bonds go up and we're going to have rates being cut um, as the markets get weaker and the economy gets weaker, uh, which favors higher bond pricing. So pretty, pretty exciting from that front that we're finally getting back into regular stock market uh, price action. Um, all right, so let's take a look at where else money's flowing. We do have gold pushing up here, threatening to hit new all-time highs again today. Um, again, it just it just keeps squeezing, and, and it looks like it's on the verge of popping and having a big expansion. Um, I, gold continues to be that defensive play, low volatility. People can park a bunch of money in it, not sweat bullets. It's not going to drop 10% in that week. Um, so that's what we're seeing here, and it's stuck under resistance. At any point here, we could see a nice big pop and move higher and the stock market being overbought might have a bit of a pullback and we see money flow into bond or sorry into gold as that kind of safe haven play taking a quick look at gold seasonality here we are in august middle of august typically gold moves higher into the end of the year so this also favors our our move for gold which is 2650 to 2750 about 10 percent upside from where it is right now uh, so everything is in line. We're in that perfect market condition in terms of cycles. If we take a look, uh, we are in this phase right now where uh, precious metals, more so uh, gold, uh, comes to life. Uh, we have energy stocks trading near all-time highs, ca industrial capital goods. This is all telling us usually gold does very well right near a market top. And so everything is in line. We, I believe we're near or at a market top. Gold is outperforming. Um, seasonality wise gold is in favor to move higher so that's uh that's why i keep harping on you know if somebody wants to do something else they can do gold uh, as a very slow grind higher in this market um, and it's kind of counter to what the markets are doing we don't want to be in the stock market right now we don't quite have a buy signal yet uh, gold is that defensive play that uh, can defy gravity during certain part times and in, in phases and stages and cycles of the market. And I believe we're kind of in that sweet window for the next month or two uh, going forward. Um, if we go and take a look over at oil, we do have oil down about two and a half percent this morning, pulling back. It's just noisy and choppy trading in a narrowing range. Nothing exciting there. In terms of uh, the markets, we do have now half of the, the, the sectors, more than half turning bullish. Uh, less than half are in short term uptrends. So longer term momentums are, are tarnished, starting to turn up, but most of them are still in a short term downtrend. Uh, if we actually look at some of just these some of these top sectors, you can see here we are definitely still in this um, type of market condition where the market sells off and then we go into this complacency move. Very stage three. This is real estate. Uh, we look at regional banks. Uh, same type of thing. The market uh, more or less topped out, sold off. It's in this complacency phase. It does have a series of lower highs. Um, utilities kind of bucked the trend a little bit in terms of uh, price action. It's starting to move up and test some of these highs. Um, let's take a look at uh, the telecom sector. Again, it has sold off and it's in that sideways phase. Let's take a look at Arc K. It was a top performer yesterday. This is growth stocks. Um, and again, it, it is it really kind of had that stage three topping phase over here. It's gone into the uh, stage four, like full on decline. Now it's in this big pause phase, which I do believe we're going to see eventually the ARK ETF down in the, in the teens, like 16 or 18 somewhere. If we have this next market correction to the downside, this is nothing more than a big pause. I know a lot of people are seeing this as the bottom and a base and they're accumulating or they're still holding it from up here, but it could be cut in half again. And that puts people down like 85% or so from the highs, uh, which is like a 500% return plus to try and get back. And so that's uh, the problem with holding on to, to losing positions. Once they get so big, people just decide to, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll just hold on to it. But sometimes taking a loss is a good thing. It gives you something to write against, your gains against, <clears throat> get you positioned somewhere to start making your money back sooner versus then just leave it as dead money for potentially many, many years. 
Um, other than that, um, we do have a bunch of new triggers uh, on the markets. Retail had a big move yesterday, uh, over 4%, which is huge. But just look at the retail space. This is very similar to what we've seen in the Russell 2000. Market kind of had a squeeze up and then it sells off. Um, again, it's in this complacency phase, this stage three top, which again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, here is a stage three top. You have the market top and then it consolidates and eventually it goes off a cliff into a reset. So that is kind of what most stocks in general are doing. They're obviously the major indexes that are tech heavy are leading are, are holding up and don't have this pattern, but most stocks are really bearish and, and not doing very well. They've moved up over the last little bit. 4% move in retail space. Just look at this chart though. Everybody's talking about retail yesterday because of strong um, earnings. The grand scheme of things, I mean, we've seen these big pops over and over again. They get sold into, it's a news driven pop. The market really is just sideways. The long-term chart trend is pointing to much, much lower pricing in due time. And uh, of course it's it's back to school. We're seeing record credit card debt uh, get it coming up. We're seeing record credit card defaults. Yes, there's buying going on, but can people even pay this stuff back? Like, I mean, it's credit buying. It's not real wealth buying. Um, that's the way I see it anyway. So all these things are, are, are still giving me that warning sign that this market is very close to a huge cliff and most sectors are going to go off and sell down another 30, 40 uh, percent from where they are. Anyway, we'll see how that unfolds. We are very close today. We could actually have a buy signal in the stock market. We are very close to the, the tide changing and kicking to an uptrend. We talked about this in the mentoring session, maybe for the SP 500, maybe for the QQQ, maybe both. We'll just have to see how that goes. And we're probably going to adjust how we enter the markets for this phase um, in terms of position portfolio allocation, because we have some interesting setups, very similar to uh, if we take a look at the markets right here, this this scenario that we have right here, the underlying technicals that we use for all of our strategies is actually very similar, almost identical to what happened over here. Uh, you can see the really sharp sell off on our shorter term strategy on the bottom chart, our, our asset revesting strategy, very sharp sell off and rebound. Uh, same type of thing, very sharp sell off and rebound. We are in this um, potential market correction again, and uh, it usually can lead to some chop as the market shifts momentum from an uptrend to a downtrend. Obviously, you can see here we go from a bullish, we get a, a bearish signal, it sells off for, for a year, and then we're back into a bullish signal. I believe we're in a transition point uh, based on not only the cycles and stages and patterns we've seen, but the underlying momentum and money flows are also consistent with a market top. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Chris Vermulen. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.